afternoon. Thought I'd run through some more uh, classic games. They're very interesting, I think, from the London Classic. And uh, being at the tournament you know, adds adds a sort of special personal significance to the games, which uh, I kind of missed out on because I was playing in the Fidia Open. I wasn't paying attention too closely. But uh, on on this particular day, I remember you know uh, uh, some speculation had um, Vladimir just blundered the piece early against uh, Nakamura, but. Uh, Okay, let's check out this encounter. So, Vladimir Kramnik playing white, Karu Nak Nakamura playing black, and we have uh, an English opening, um, but with a kind of offering to go into a sort of Nimzo Indian. If, if d4 were back in Nimzo Indian territory, but without uh, that move d4, we're in a strange type of Nimzo Indian after bishop b4. Where okay, because White hasn't played d4, he doesn't mind so much. Perhaps Bishop takes c3. <laughs> Pardon me. So he just plays g3. Uh, so okay, and now um, we see the move c5. So c5 is that kind of like a, a, a positional punishment that White hasn't played d4. You know, c, c takes d4 is then available. Then maybe target the c pawn, especially if the bishop's on this diagonal. Then then. Um, C4 is maybe a bit more vulnerable than usual to attack. Okay, so this interesting move C5, which I think is all theory anyway at the moment. Bishop G2, both sides castle, and now we see the move D6. Okay, and now I think we are transposing into some sort of variation within the Nimzo because White plays D4. So um, the bishop now hemmed in by that pawn on c5. I don't really think it's got time to retreat back. It would lose a lot of time. The logical thing now is to fracture white's pawns. So bishop takes c3, and now supporting c5 uh, with this next move, queen e7. For example, you know, may you know maybe a4 and bishop a3 is going to be unpleasant. So supporting c5, but also the queen's like logically centrally placed to support e5 as well later. So queen e7 seems a nice move. And then we see, uh, you know, seemingly anti-positional move. D takes C5, capturing away from the centre, emphasising the pawn islands more. You know, now there's, there's three pawn islands, but it's all it's all about the dynamism, I think, of the white pieces. You know, on on the D5, and the use of maybe E5 and maybe Bishop F4, these squares in particular. Um, but uh, I don't know if this was preparation or not from Vladimir. But um, in che in the Chess Gamescom database, there's a game here with Bishop F4, which looks logical because it's striking out at these sensitive squares. But uh, what um, Vladimir plays is actually uh, Knight E5, which looks as though it's going to be much the same. You know, maybe Bishop F4 later. But actually, it's like uh, Naka really tactically pounced on Vladimir here. And I got the impression there was some rumour that this may have been um, kind of uh, the impact of one of Neca, Neca's helpers, who goes around, with, you know, at, at, who continually analyses games with Rubka and finds uncomfortable positions for opponents. That uh, maybe they, they had probability-wise suspected a move like knight e5 uh, from Vladimir, and we get a kind of computer-like um, punishment of this move now. Believe it or not, uh, you know, threat after threat after threat. Basically, even if it's uh, weakening um, the king side, we're seeing the dreadful-looking moves ordinarily. Uh, so we, the first in such in the sequence now is is queen c7. Okay, I mean th this is an odd move in its own way. Uh, because you know why can't White just point the bishop uh, as well as protect the knight? Point the bishop at the queen. Uh, so wouldn't that be kind of menacing? You know, the queen's going to have to move. Well, then we we get another strange sort of computer-looking move now. Knight h5. But um, here, you know, the the safe option for for Vladimir, which I, I'm pretty sure he he must have considered, is just e3, which just attacks that knight. Um, okay, it offers double pawns, but given you know White's playing dynamically anyway, he doesn't mind double pawns. He wants pressure. You know, may maybe this this is a reasonable continuation uh, with a slight advantage uh, for White. Maybe um, don't know. May maybe even uh, maybe taking the G pawns a bit riskier. Taking with the E pawn, you could further reinforce that knight on E5. But uh, the strange thing is here. That um, now I don't really know if this was intentional or not. This uh, 
I, I, uh, I think I missed out on the, co- on the live commentary after in the commentary room when, when players talk about the games. I think ma- maybe the answer's in there, and I'll check that out and put a comment in this video if, if there is an answer to this. Was was this uh, was this really um, o- offering a piece deliberately? Now I wonder if you can spot Naka's next move here. I'll give you ten seconds, starting from now. Okay, he played move G5, which ordinarily uh, is is dreadful to move. You know, like a pawn in front of your own king. The queen side development is, is not not really developed. So, you know, not on the rim. Um, you know, White's uh, got the rooks connected. Uh, you know, maybe potentially using D file, potentially using these pawn fractures. You know, this is pawn isolated pawns and stuff. So, is there going to be compensation for the, for the piece? Well, Bishop takes G5. So that poor knight is snapped up, but um, but look at White's position. You know, Rook A D one. Um, intuitively, it seems you know Black's got a few issues uh, to solve here. Um, but uh, and now and now we see another pawn move, which which is very very um, interesting. Instead of a uh, move like Knight F six, uh, I was looking at this a bit with, with Ribka. You know, this this kind of position. Um, might be you know might be blacks okay, but uh, may- maybe you know th- this knight's like a target for g5 at some point. Maybe maybe uh, that was ruled out for some reason by Naka or his or his preparation team. But uh, so in this position, he actually um, played f6, which you know potentially um, is is giving some more weaknesses. You know, uh, especially if this pawn moves, that you know this diagonal might be weak. Um, but it is gaining another tempo on on the bishop. And now to bishop h6, the knight can uh, reroute more centrally to g7. Okay, so bishop f4, but it's not over yet. I mean, this is the beginning of the story here. Uh, okay, black snapped up a piece, but look, you know, at his queenside um, development. Look at potential uh, weaknesses uh, to attack. So queen h5, bishop d6. Okay, the rook's moving to e8 now. Now queen f4. So, um,. How does black uh, defend this? Well, knight d7 protects f6, but now comes g4, and it looks as though you know that there's potential for a, a strong initiative here. Queen f7, and now even the rook is swinging into the attack. And look at these pieces; they're still stuck on the queen side. And you know, you can imagine a rook coming over, and maybe even this rook being used on the f file later, as is the case in the game. So e5, okay, evicting the queen from f4. But it's going to a comfortable parking spot on h6. So it still, for me, looks quite scary now. As, as this e5 also weaken this diagonal. Okay, there's not e6s, but um, it, is uh, Naka really playing with uh, fire here in this game? Or, you know, was he really, really confident that this is just a piece up? Well, here, okay, he can get the queens off now, which he does off this queen h6 with queen g6. Um, if if the queens don't come off, then uh, knight e6 to f4 might be unpleasant if the queen has to move back, say to h will be with tempo. Um, okay, so the queens do come off, but uh, it still seems a bit dangerous for black. Uh, bishop e4, okay, how to defend this pawn? Uh, g5 looks a bit committal, you know, rook h3, and there's a bit, a bit of a bind on the light squares and... Black's really just hemmed in, so King F7 keeps some flexibility there, but it's putting the King on the target of the F file. It's it's just a very very strange tactical game, where you know an early piece sack uh, was it accidental or, or on purpose, but it leads to this um, situation where Black uh, is is under fire for quite some time. So Bishop D5, check, 96. Now Bishop takes F4. Uh, so these bishops, yeah, they seem very active. The rooks seem very active. White's pieces are kind of optimally active, and black really hasn't developed the queen side yet. Um, so, but does it matter? Knight b6 is is an interesting move, actually, offering um, the f6 pawn, because when it was on d7, it was protecting the e5 square from bishop e5, because that pawn's pinned. So, so Neck is actually offering back, uh, so offering more material to get his pieces out of the box. Basically, these two guys. 
So Knight B6, you know, achieves that. Com computer suggestions here are very interesting. That as though Black's got a big advantage with other moves like King G7 or A5, but they, these other moves don't actually sort out this this intuitive issue. You know, just just getting the pieces out. This this move does, even though it gives up you know material to Bishop E5. At least it's it's getting rid of White's dangerous bishop as well, all at the cost of um, you know the f pawn. So after C takes, okay, the f pawn's now dropping off because uh, because the knight was actually temporarily protecting f6 just then. So now now White takes on f6. So we have a situation now which um, at least you can see the bishop is is able to be developed. The knight's actually protecting g6. There's no light square bishop from White, so the attack seems to be. Less, less, a bit less steam than before, uh, but still looking a bit dangerous. Bishop d6, and now um, not not a normal sort of developing move. Um, well, c5 will be dropping off anyway. So Necker wants to 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 not lose too much material here. He attacks the rook first actually, and now um, after rook f4. Maybe you know he doesn't like it there. He and he wants to square for for the knight. Maybe g6. So he uses g5 again, <laughs> more positionally this time. So rook f2. And now finally he defends that that c5 pawn. He has to take time to defend that. He can't lose too much material here. He's only got well the knight for it. Okay. So material situation at the moment: four pawns for black, six pawns for white. So two pawns for the knight. But uh, the king attack. Is running out of steam. Uh, Black's got potential coordination now on e5, the e square, e5 square with knight g6, and potentially getting the bishop out kind of easily. Bishop's anyway targeting g4. Okay, so we see rook d f3, which which puts you know battery puts question to f7. So uh, that that's one small snag in this position. That the rooks are still getting even more aggressive. Okay, so fine, knight g6, check. Now the king goes to a seemingly awkward square, king h6. But now h4 is sealed actually by the knight and as well as the pawn on g5. So how does white perceive this attack? Um, Vladimir plays h3. Okay, but finally the, 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 these pieces are starting to be developed. Bishop a6, and now there's coordination as well being demonstrated. So maybe, you know, the sun sets, um, the sun's coming in now for, for black. Uh, he, you know, th there's less issues here to solve. Finally, okay. So rook two to f6, giving up the e2 pawn. Um, but um, is is this attack really that strong now? Bishop e7. Okay, so g5 is a potential um, target. Bishop c4. You know, Nako is is keen to just use his bishop to start munching up white pawns all over the place. So <laughs> rook rook d6. And now a little decoy move. Uh, bishop takes d5. So to try to unpin this, to be able to play rook um, e7. Okay, but uh, here there's bishop takes g5, uh, seemingly punishing that decoy move, uh, retaining you know the two pawns for the knight at least. So three four. No, actually it's one pawn for the knight now. Four against three. But look at where the king is having to go here. This is looking a bit ridiculous. Uh, that the king um, has to now go to h4. Um, if it goes to to h6, it will be actually mate here. That will be rook h5 mate. So he's forced to move his king to h4. And um, here, you know, with this theme in mind, this this rook h5 theme is actually a very interesting move. Maybe you know, king g2. But I'm not sure it's it's enough actually. Uh, black is a piece up here. Can defend this mate now with rook e5. So look, this is just a variation. So say takes takes. Now say white renews that threat of mate and attacking the knight. Then black has a piece sack. Knight takes g4. And in this position, okay. Uh, if if rook f4 for example, then rook g4. Sorry, rook g8. And that looks be better for black. Um, if like H G four King takes someone mentioned this as being equal, but I don't see this as being equal because Rook D eight here, the the King superiority uh, is it seems much better for the Black King. So say say Black loses A seven. Okay, we're temporarily totally equal on pawns, but this check means the King's driven back to the first row. 
King F4 black looks a lot better to me in this rook and pawn ending um, with the king you know ni nicely cut off this king can start walking and munching this pawn you know that that pawn will be enough to win so that looks unpleasant so maybe this this is why this this whole thing was ruled out here this this king g2 or maybe it was just time trouble blunder maybe, maybe that should have been tried but um, in this position rook f3 was played and now it seems you know black's issues are starting to be all over because rook e5 okay so black just seems to be a knight up now rook f5 um okay so knight d3 uh black has to be careful though this rook h5 idea uh, which is now renewed with king h2 so there's a threat again of rook h5 mate so rook h8 defends against the rook h5 mate Okay, so black is just a piece up now, we can say, more, more safely. Uh, there isn't too much compensation. A4, uh, now rook h6. Okay, so with rook h6, at some point maybe this knight can come back as well to, to d6 to attack this, this rook. Uh, it might have some other points to it as well. Um, okay, so king g2. It also defends b6 now, actually supporting this next move, which is played a5. So the b6 pawns supported again. You know, stop. You know, the rook can't do too much damage now on on that rank. So king f3. Okay. Now here, I think there's a little bit of a trap set actually. Having a look at this, if king takes h3, uh, then maybe check. And this pawn is a bit of a runner. How is this pawn stopped? Um, if if we uh, if if the king is allowed to march in, if this knight you know if the king gets in over here, then these pawns are going to drop off. So so that's to be avoided, I think. Th this idea of, of uh, too quickly snapping up um, h3 here. Uh, so instead, actually, knight b2. Okay, just trying to munch this a pawn. So king f4. So the a pawn's actually munched kind of safely. And then c3 is now targeted. c4. Now knight c3. This pawn's now ready to run. King e3. Now pawn starts running. And now uh, knight d1. Okay, maintaining the knight. Maybe the knight's going to come and snap this h3 pawn. So rook f8. And now actually in this position, without the rook h5, the king's now safe to take on h3. So I think it's it's starting to be all over now. Th this dynamism of white with with the past pawns. Is, is getting far less than before. Check. And now King G4. And finally, uh, Vladimir, he, he resigns here. I think it's a really wild game. It's not like um, just just White losing a piece. There, there seemed to me, to me uh, and to, I think to people in Spectrum of Engines, a, a lot of compensation. So this line might be repeated in the future with some improvements for White. You, you never know. Um, very interesting idea this knight e5 prov provoking uh, black in into awkward looking moves to win that knight on e5 particularly this g5 because you know the queen side is undeveloped underdeveloped so it's it's a really dynamic uh, interesting position um but this this move f6 as well you know moving some more pawns where uh you know white's pieces are all very active uh, seems a bit dodgy but it's you know maybe this is just all part of um some strange preparation at some point, which um, which Necker's second had helped with Necker's seconds or whatever his team. So Queen H6. Um, so there's a timely um, pawn sack by Black to to get rid of White's bishop pair here, coming up with this Knight B6. So the key thing is, I mean, I wonder how many of us would would have done this. Uh, to play knight b6 to invite bishop e5, you know, winning this f pawn, and along with that, you know, make, you know, encouraging maybe a battery coming to f7. It all looks a bit dicey to play to play in such a way, but it is reducing White's long-term, you know, attacking prospects if the bishop can, pair can be removed uh, like this. So at the expense of the f pawn, okay, there's a big invitation now um, to come with the rooks uh, very shortly. Uh, starting here, uh, so b6, so the rooks double, and it, it's scary looking, um, uh, but um, it's it seems to be by by the evidence of this game, uh, 
defendable. Once uh, the rooks are now finally connected, and there's some coordination going on in the black pieces, um, his main task is not to get mated with his king on on h5. It seems in some of the variations coming up here. So um, so king h4. Okay, so he's got some escape squares at the moment. <laughs> you know, g3 if if rook h5. Um, and now he has to really defend against this rook h5 uh, stuff. So rook e5. And now again, um, uh, after knight d3, king h2, again, rook h5 mate is threatened. So it's kind of an entertaining game from that angle that, you know, black, black's king's been stuck on h4 for quite some time. And, and finally, you know, this, this, this nice little rook move supports, um, uh, a5, um, Without, without losing the whole queen side, that's that's an important consideration here. Not to be too keen to, to snap up on h3 because of rook h5. Just use the knight to sort of um, create that outside past a pawn, and um, and then after that it starts to be finally plain sailing. So in this position, um, Vladimir resigned. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a bit of a crazy game. I'm sure there's going to be lots of analysis on this one uh, for the piece sack being sound or not. Uh, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.